Albert Breer joining me live right now here on the Rich Eisen Show of NFL Media. Albert, I don't think there's any question that, that what's going on with Adrian Peterson has to do with what w went down with Ray Rice. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the world that we live in. That's the world that the NFL's living in. It's, it's the court of public opinion. And, 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 and perhaps Adrian Peterson should have read that room before he took the, the, the approach that he's been taking uh, with the league over the past week and a half. Would you agree with that assessment, or yeah, am I, I off? Mean, it, just imagine, Rich, just think about this. What if that video had never, uh, never surfaced in September? I mean, we'd be talking about a completely different landscape here, and I think that's, you know, obviously colored everybody's thoughts on everything. And um, you can't separate Ray Rice's case from Greg Hardy's case and Greg Hardy's case from Adrian Peterson's case because, you know, all that stuff happened within, and, and, you know, obviously the incidents were separate, but that stuff was all in the news at the same time, and it was when the league, you know, took the hardest PR hits. And so... You know, I, there's absolutely an element of public relations here. And how does this play in the Today Show and Good Morning America? And, and how's the general public, not the hardcore NFL fan that's always going to watch no matter what, how's the general public who's the, um, you know, the casual football fan, how are they taking all of this? And it certainly has an effect on everything. I mean, it's what the NFL is, it's a business, you know, and, and PR is a, is a big part of that. Well, I mean, when you think of it, Albert, though, people are hoping that whatever the league comes up with for their new conduct policy and how it's adjudicated, the appeals process, et cetera, that's supposed to come out at the Super Bowl, that there's going to be some sort of uh, everything-fits-all approach. Yeah. The, the, how is this shaping up this, this new conduct policy that's going to be announced? How is all of these cases helping shape that process in your estimation? Well, I think part of it is, you know, we're in a gray area now. So obviously the, the, the Hardy and Peterson and Rice cases are, you've got the new domestic violence policy that went in before, um, you know, the firestorm in early September. Um, then after that, you know, we, you've got the, the conduct policy as it stands right now, which it almost seems archaic, which is weird to talk about it that way. But you know, it came after. You know, this is it. we're at. We're you know now post Goodell um, admitting his mistake in the handling of the Rice situation. You know, I, I think the main thing you're going to look at is how um, each case is going to be judged. And you know, my understanding of how that's going to work, um, at least what's on the table right now, is that they're going to either appoint a discipline czar, a single person, or a three-man discipline panel. Um, that's going to decide how each of these cases, you know, the punishment, how each of the players are sanctioned, how each of the players are treated, all of it. And so that's likely to be, you know, at, at least one former player. Maybe it's completely former players that are on that panel or is that one person, that czar. And, um, you know, then after that, the commissioner, because I think the league thinks it's important that the commissioner remains involved in the process, the commissioner would be the appeals officer. Huh. So I think that that's, you know, an interesting idea. I think the league thinks it's important that the commissioner isn't the first voice on these things. And um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as, as you know, how it relates to the, the players' union, too, because, of course, they want to be involved in the process. And um, I think their role in shaping all of this is, uh, is something that's going to be a major point of contention between the two sides as we go forward. It already has been. 90 ticks, 90 ticks left, Albert. So I want to hit you with a couple quick hitters here. So mm -hmm. where does everything stand with Peterson? The appeal uh, it, it's gonna, is happening. The, the question right. is to whom? Do we well, have any more well, idea? Yeah, and that's the, that's the question, right? The big question right now is, is who's that appeal going to be heard by? If it's, held by? if it's heard by a neutral arbitrator, Peterson will participate. I don't think that'll be any problem, and then we'll get a ruling hopefully fairly quickly. If Goodell decides to hear it himself, then Peterson could wind up deciding not to participate, and there are legal reasons for that. Um, you know, the other part of it, obviously, his being on the exempt list, that part's done. His next remedy, Adrian Peterson's next remedy in that case, would be going to federal court. Hmm. And Rusty Harden said uh, with Dan that he didn't think that there, he was planning on suing the NFL, but obviously they reserved the right to change that. And lastly, you're in D.C. Were you at the RG3 press conference earlier Yeah, tonight? I was. And I was also at the On to Cincinnati press conference, which is the precursor <laughs> for the, for the so it's you. San Francisco so, press conference. So, so it's you. Both of them. <laughs> so it's you. You're a factor, Albert. I guess so, yeah. I, uh, I, I guess we finally can put On to Cincinnati to bed now, and we can get focused on San Francisco. Clearly. <laughs> I mean, uh, we had Jason Reed on, and he, he and the rest of the, it seems, the rest of the local media there are not taking too kindly to uh, seeing what, what RG3 did today. Yeah, it was, a, it was a strange press conference, to say the least. You know, I, I think certainly a, a recognition from, um, 
from Griffin um, of the events of the last three days. And it'll be interesting to see how this goes forward because we all know that relationship between the coach and quarterback can be the most important one in an entire organization. And that's the one everybody's going to be watching going forward. I think the most interesting thing to come out of it, other than the fun we'll have with focused on San Francisco, is that he did address his teammates about this on Monday. I think that's an important point and some acknowledgement of fault in this case. Albert, thanks for calling and appreciate it. Anytime, Rick. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.